Hi class. Um, so for this week, as promised, um, my um, demo is going to be on uh, Xerox transfers and how to use that method um, to kind of prepare uh, your ground or use that um, for mixed media paintings. Okay. So uh, Xerox transfer is kind of like a cross I guess between more of a printmaking and alternative photographic processes um, and a lot of uh, uh, painters and drawers um, actually use this method as well for their work. And um, before uh, we are done, I'll show you kind of another method that's a bit of a crossway between uh, photography and printmaking that you can use for mixed media work, which is the cyanotype that I just tried for the first time today that I'm really excited about. Okay, so a Xerox transfer, um, I did briefly describe this in class before. Um, it's a way to use um, like any copies, like Xerox copies or um, things you have printed out of your printer um, um, that's inky, right? So um, I would not suggest using like glossy, um, fancy magazine sheets, for example. Like we want... Um, sometimes like the cheapest prints actually work the best uh, because the medium absorbs the ink better. Um, so for this method, I would um, recommend using um, like a smoother surface. It just um, is easier to kind of rub things off um, once we're ready to do so. Um, so your gesso masonite would work really well. Um, or what I have over here is um, just thick, uh, your hot press, your smooth watercolor paper. But I put a coat of this, uh, the ultra matte medium on it, right? Um, so this, what it does is because this is so, the paper is naturally so absorbent. If you want to use like acrylics or um, oils, you need to kind of seal the porousness um, of the paper. And that's basically what I did um, using this medium. You can also use um, your glass medium if you like, but everyone should have gotten, you know, a pretty nice size uh, jar of the matte medium. So, and it dries really matte, which I actually really like, uh, especially when I'm starting the, the painting um, and if I'm using paper to do so. Um, okay, so what I did was I applied a whole layer with my brush onto this whole uh, sheet already so the paper is prepped. Um, if you're using canvas sheets, um, I would actually suggest um, either doing the same or gessoing just to kind of reduce the, the texture of the wovenness of uh, the canvas. Then what I did was um, uh, I printed out the sheets, uh, this image. You can use, you know, um, text. A lot of people actually do transfers with various texts or photographic images. Um, if, if there is like um, text on the image, just know that when we do the transfer, because what we're essentially doing is turning the image upside down, that it will be mirror image. Um, if it is important to you that your transfer reads left to right, right, or in whatever direction that language that is in your transfer is, um, then you want to flip it on your computer first and then print it out, if that makes sense, okay? So um, what I did was I just kind of cut out a shape from this. Um, you don't have to, you can do the whole thing if you want, but sometimes when you're working with, you know, photographic images, think of which portion, right, you want to include, right? Including this right here would make a you know, very different read than, for example, just the, the person, right? If you're already working with pre-existing images, um, think of like how you can crop it and position things to uh, practice your own artistic liberty and editing processes. Right? And how do you make it better than the image, right? Or more interesting? Um, so I decided, you know, let's say I want to focus on this image, right? Or it might actually be kind of cool to have the negative part too, right? And then have this part just be blank on your transfer. And what I, what you do is, um, you get some 
medium, quite a bit actually, and then make sure you have a nice coat of it, a nice thick coat everywhere, okay? Just in case, I would also make sure I have a nice coat on my surface. And then what you do is you turn that image upside down and you press, press, press really well, okay? So what that does is as your medium is drying, it's going to be absorbing the ink that's on your paper. So uh, this is the one that, um, for the sake of this video, because it would be really boring for you to just watch this dry for, you know, an hour or so. Um, uh, I did this a couple of hours ago. So um, once it's completely dry, it's ready to go to the next stage, um, which could take anywhere between, um, you know, 30 minutes to maybe an hour or two. Just kind of feel it, you know, if it still feels kind of cold and damp, um, let it sit for much longer, okay? So here's this part that's basically dry now. And what I have here is really hot water. So um, you can do really hot water from the faucet. I just kind of uh, use my electrical kettle. Um, and what I'm gonna, what you're gonna, I'm gonna do is you can use your fingers to do it, or you can also use uh, a, a sponge. And as it gets wet, do you see we're, we're, you're actually starting to already see that image, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna carefully, don't rub too hard because you'll rub off everything. You're gonna carefully Ooh, isn't that like magic? rub off the wet, so you're wetting the top part of this paper with hot water and you're kind of rubbing it off. And see, you already see like the part, you know, I accidentally rubbed off. I kind of find that quite charming. Um, that's a lot easier to happen if you're using the sponge. Um, which is kind of why sometimes I prefer for some areas to just use my my hands and my fingers. larger softer brushes here but with the kind of your large wide soft brush that would work really well but um i think i might have left mine in my office so i'm just going to kind of carefully rub off this part and note that we're just kind of starting the groundwork right for this um for the painting, like I would never expect just doing the transfer as you're finished with your painting or your work, right? Um, I mean, unless it is some kind of bigger conceptual component or reason um, that's part of it, or in a kind of a series perhaps. So you can already see like, okay, there's some ink that's kind of, you know, rubbing off. But this actually is, um, oh, there's a sponge. This is a basic concept is how it works, right? And it gets kind of this nice, interesting, like a little vintagey 
type of a look. And unless, and it's, I, it's a different aesthetic than collagen because if you look at the edges, right, this is kind of completely part of the painting now, right? And it gets this kind of little accidental parts that gets rubbed off or the kind of edges that are a bit rough. Um, some people, I've had some students who are very careful in OCD and they were able to do this um, without any parts accidentally rubbing off. Okay. All right. So we have like our transfer here now, right? Um, so usually what happens is as it dries, the paper that's wet dries too and you get like a white film on top, okay? So to keep that from happening, kind of really lightly, 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 lightly. You know, rub off all the paper parts as much of it as you can. And what I'm what I do is um, to keep the white like from raising up to get you know because it's really easy for once this part that's now wet to dry to get kind of fuzzy at the top is to put another, I'm actually gonna put another coat of um, medium on it. So it can be either matte medium or gloss medium, right? Just something that dries clear. Um, when I do this, like um, to start an oil painting, oh, this, this does not work on top of oil painting because it has to be uh, an acrylic kind of water-based medium for it to work. But um, it does, you can paint oils on top of it. So sometimes I seal the whole thing with liquid. Okay, so once that dries, they will dry clear. Um, but as it's doing that, um, what, so that's uh, one, okay, so we'll wait for this dry for now because I'm gonna show you something um, afterwards, okay? But um, I want to show you this because I think this is really kind of beautiful. Um, I've tried kind of two different renditions. So this is a cyanotype, uh, C-Y-A-N-O-T-Y-P-E, um, cyanotype, yeah. So uh, coming from the word cyan, right, for the blue. Um, and it's like the, the process is very similar to, you may have done this when you're kids, uh, doing these photograms where you place objects on top of light sensitive um, paper and you put it out in the sun um, to make an impression and the part that gets blocked out from the sun um, turns darker. The same thing, um, but this one was a pre-treated fabric um, you can get it pretty cheaply from like, you know, your Blick or another online art store and probably even Amazon um, or Jared's Artorama. Um, and what you do is you can do it on paper or fabric. You can mix, it's a part one, part two, mix them together. You brush it onto your surface. Uh, but again, this one, um, it's a, like a classroom kit. So it already came pre pre-treated uh, with the chemical that's needed. So all I had to do was place this fabric and then um, I have um, this uh, Mexican sage flower that I thought was really pretty and I place a heavy book on top of it overnight to make it flat because the part that's important is good contact, right? It's kind of pressed against it. Um, and you can use a piece of glass, or here I use just a clear, clear uh, sheet of a clear film, and then I just kind of pinned it down to a cardboard. And then I left it out in the sun for about 15 minutes. And then you run it through water. So with water, um, you, you, know, you basically rinse it, kind of squeeze out um, 
whatever coating or the color that's on top of it. Yeah. And you get this kind of beautiful imprint, which I think is really gorgeous. And onto this, you know, I can do all kinds of things. I can stretch this little piece of fabric, right, onto the bars um, and uh, paint on top of it, sew on top of it. Um, yeah. And I think the possibilities are pretty endless uh, with this process. So, um, and I checked the prices and these are like, the chemicals are very, or the starter kits are only maybe like $12 or something, right? So it's um, not a very expensive uh, thing to try out if you think this might be something that you want to try for your mixed media projects. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to this little thing. You can now see like what I mean by um, the text reading right in another direction, right? Um, so what I normally would do to a painting like this is um, I would, let's see, I'm trying to find the right colors. Where is my white? I like to push back. Sometimes pushing back in value does not necessarily have to be darker. It could also be lighter, okay? So um, what I like to do is I have a little bit of white and I'm just gonna put a little bit of medium on top. And just kind of paint around and you can be quite expressive so for example let's say like i want this area to be the part that stands out the most and i and the other parts i can be pushed down a lot more I don't know where my Zacto blade went. I was gonna cut this along this way. Um, Cause normally what I would do is okay here. For example, this part. Right, then now it's ready once this part dries to be painted on top of, right? And I can react to the imagery that's underneath. It's almost like you're embedding, you know, your starting of the painting with kind of this photographic transfers and imagery, or you can do it on top too. I've done a lot of transfers on top of acrylic paintings already. But again, like it's so much easier if you have kind of a hard surface, like a panel, or masonite or wood panel. Um, I personally would not necessarily encourage you to do this on paper. Um, this is just a way for me to show you the process. I mean, it works, but um, you know, it's just uh, slightly crappy looking, <laughs> all right? Um, all right, so, um, that's your demo for uh, Xerox transfers, okay? And so that will be part of your assignment is to, um, so you will notice that the things that we did in class on Monday and also this demo has a lot to do with like, how do you like kind of start building your ground, right? To make it a lot kind of more interesting than, um, than just thinking about it as like, 
your subject matter, and then the rest is just background, right? That's kind of a, a very elementary way of looking at painting. So um, kind of thinking about how we are layering things, okay? Okay, bye.